Hey guys, so welcome, welcome back to Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward. I'm so sorry for the delay in getting this episode out. It's been a hectic week, and it sucks because this is like the part where we learn everything about the game, right? And I'm just ready to have my mind blown even more than it already has been because of these puzzles were damn hard <laughs> doing the dice puzzle and that hexagon puzzle. My goodness me, it took a lot out of me. Anyway, that's why I needed to take a break, come back, listen to this explanation, it's gonna be wonderful, she's not gonna cut it short or anything, and everything's gonna be explained, it's gonna be fan-freaking-tastic. So let's get comfy, and let's carry on where we left off. Here we go. <sighs> come on, Akane. Spill the beats. I assume you heard the name by now, at least. In any event, you are all needed in order to execute our plan. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The nonary game was necessary for the same reason. Of course, you have a habit of making nonary games, don't you, Akane? Goodness me, but you've made it to the ripe old age of, um, well, however old you are and decided to go back to your roots and like, you know what I need to do before I die? One more nonary game. Is that what it was? Your question now, I imagine, is just what is this AB project? Yeah, what is that all about? The answer to that is also simple. I can imagine it is once I hear it. Allow me to explain. We created the AB project for one purpose. To transport the consciousnesses of two people into the past. Those two people are you, Sigma, and you, Phi. There we go. We've been name dropped, me and Phi, the two people capable of jumping between realities, huh? Hmm. Transport the consciousness of two people into the past. Didn't you do that already, Akane? Kind of, sort of? Because, uh, didn't Junpei access the morphogenetic field and helped you, like, nine years in the past, right? Is that what you're going on about? Like, you spent all this time pondering about it, and you're like, you know what, I need to do an experiment right now, now that I'm an old woman. And mind you, what's up with keeping Clover on ice for 40 years, then? <laughs> what do you mean, the past? If you're saying that we're all necessary to complete this project, like, why was Clover, like, put into cold sleep for however many years this is? Like, I don't know, 40 years? 30? 50? 60? I don't know how old she is. If I had, I'd like to guess 70 or 60. The moment the words were out of my mouth, I realized no one there could answer the question. Not Phi, not Ten Muji, <laughs> and certainly not a pre recorded hologram. Have you figured out what this room is? I assume you saw the cue on the door. Mm-hmm. Cue for quitting, because this game- because the puzzle's here, man. Honestly, I just wanted to quit. <laughs> it stands for Quantum. Ah, I see. Okay. I know you guys gave me a little bit of a ribbing, like, you know, I didn't know what the cue stood for and it kind of settled over my head, but... I feel like I guessed Quantum, maybe? When I was just spelling out random words beginning with Q? Maybe I forgot, I don't know. Um, I can see why. Quantum, you know, or quantum theory. Oh, we've got Schrodinger's cat, of course. It's like quantum physics, of course. That makes this the quantum room. Right, the quantum room. Is it because there's puzzles in here that we haven't actually done in this flow? Is that why it's called the quantum room? It took me a moment to realize she changed subjects without even pausing. There was nothing we could do, of course. But I still felt a twinge of frustration. Take a look at the rear. Uh, Do you see that large enclosure? The rear of the room? That houses our oh quantum computer. Honestly, she looks like she's seen better days in this picture. The systems that control this entire facility run on that machine. Right. That includes the construct you refer to as Zero say, Junior, as well as the golems. This is the mainframe where everyone gets uploaded when Luna was deactivated. She was running through here, I guess? Because Luna would have access to this, because she's a golem. Zero Junior. Okay. All of them do their thinking in that box. Isn't that strange, though? Why is that strange? They're computers. It seems contrary to how we perceive the world. Is it, though? The body. The thing that you see and interact with is somewhere else. Hmm. But the mind... And all its thoughts are in this box. Right. Perhaps it isn't so strange, though. Sorry, you'll have to forgive me if I take some of this dialogue slow. I'm just trying to drink it all in, trying to wrap my head around it. Perhaps humans are the same, with our minds and thoughts existing separate from 
from our bodies. Okay. Okay. I'll let you continue. I'll let you continue. Our core is in our head, of course. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. We all have individual brains, think individual thoughts, and act according to individual wills. Mm -hmm. That makes communication difficult, though. So, we're forced to rely on inefficient mediums, like language, photographs, non-verbal cues, etc., to transmit information. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, it's not that inefficient, you know, we can communicate with one another. Like, it's not like it's a huge struggle for me to tell someone how my day's been going, you know, but I can see what she means, like, if I wanted to paint a picture, I guess, in your head, like a storyteller, for example. If I wanted to say there was a handsome guy walking down the road, we would all have different images in our head of what that guy would look like compared to what I envision and I want you to envision, I suppose, maybe? I don't know. Each one of us is an individual, and we have no direct connection to anyone else. The point is we can't share things like memories and thoughts exactly how we want to. There's always room for interpretation and misinterpretation, I'm guessing? But, is that really true? Or maybe I'm just completely off base. <laughs> In the dimensions we are most familiar with, yes, it is. If we look at things from another higher dimension, however, mm -hmm. we may all be connected after all. Like, uh, um, like sorry. Like the branches of a tree. Right, I was about to say, like a family tree? Okay, like a branches of a tree? Or a rhizome. Imagine a horizontal cross-section of the root system of a large tree. See? This is where we're having trouble, you know, Akane can't transmit this image of a horizontal cross-section of a root system of a large tree in my head. Because I can't... Okay, All there we go. Oh, ah, she just did the spots where the roots intersect the plane of your cross-section. Uh-huh. In the two dimensions you see, the roots all appear to be individual things with no connection to one another. Okay. But this isn't the case. If you expand your hmm. view and look at the root system in three dimensions instead of only two, you see the truth. So I just flip the switch in my brain to switch how I view dimensions now? All the roots join together at the trunk. But yes, it's like um, what Sigma was saying before, how uh, when we're changing events and, and things, right, in different flows, it all stems from one point in time, like uh, scenario P or something? I can't remember what he said exactly, but everything stemmed from that one thing and then it all trickled down from there into different things. And we could jump between these two, or these different branches here, but there was always going to be a constant in the trunk. Or well, mind you, I suppose, if I wanted to... Uh, There'll probably be more branches than this, obviously. This is a more simplified version. In two dimensions, they appear to be separate. Okay. But, if you look at the roots from a third higher dimension... Man, I gotta get my geek on. I gotta get my science on. It's just... I'm, just, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. But I might need someone to explain this all to me afterwards. You see? I'm trying my best. Things that might appear to be separate from one another in three dimensions could be connected to one another if you look at them in four dimensions. Okay, so we're gonna just keep adding dimensions then? Doesn't that at least seem like it could be a possibility? Ah, it's all just theory, I suppose. And that's what this experiment was supposed to unravel? I believe that is how human consciousness actually works. Hmm. Well... I'm not the only one, I suppose. Zero and I share that belief. You are Zero. Or, you know, you were a Zero before. Morphogenetic field theory. <laughs> he knows. I feel like this is Junpei. It all just came together when he reached out for Akane and then I thought about the photo and everything else. Temuji mumbled something that sounded like nonsense. How he seemed so crestfallen when he saw her body I opened my mouth to ask him what it meant, but Akane was already talking again. Now, when I talk about a fourth dimension... Morphogenetic fields. <laughs> I'm re 
referring to the fourth dimension used in Minkowski space time. Of course, Minkowski space time. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? What even is Minkowski space time? Please tell me, Akane. I need Let's explanation. The single dimension where all that exists is a point. Okay, this this diagram or picture looks so, somewhat familiar. Connect points to one another, and you have a line. Yep. In one dimension, the only surface you can create is that, a line. Hmm. Right. Or two dimensions, you mean? But move to two dimensions oh. and create more lines, and you can create shapes. I suppose this is two dimension. Oh, I suppose a line, yeah, would be one dimension. You'd only see, like, width or height. Whereas two dimensions, you can see width and length, for example. These are two-dimensional surfaces. Okay. Move up to three dimensions, and you can connect these shapes to one another and form three-dimensional objects. Yes. Okay, I can see that. Yep. Now you have a three-dimensional surface, which encompasses a volume of space. Connect three-dimensional objects to one another, and you formed a four-dimensional object, which encompasses a volume of both space and time. Um, okay, so we just combine objects and then we've got time now. Is that it? Because this still looks three-dimensional to me, or maybe I just can't comprehend what you mean by encompassing both space and time. Because I can't see time. It is on that fourth-dimensional axis that our minds are connected. Right. If that was true, then what would prevent anyone from sending their consciousness backward or forward in time? This is all just one gigantic experiment to see if I'll send my consciousness back in time to save your life, maybe? That's why you were so willing to get your, to sacrifice yourself because you knew I'd go back in time and save you or something? Maybe? I don't know, maybe I'm just reaching now. That theory is the foundation of the AB project. I see. So because I can jump between flows, backwards in time, I suppose, and redo certain choices. That's me transporting my consciousness across time. The A represents after, and the B represents before. We had a brief glimpse of this, didn't we? In 999, I think, um, towards the end, when we went to the captain's room, I think it was. And there was one point where... Uh, Junpei suddenly like had a change of attitude towards Ace because we knew he was a bad guy or something and we just like suddenly didn't trust him. I think I remember that. I can't quite remember clearly though, but I think that was like the first instance of maybe transporting consciousness across flows. Because there wasn't too much of that in 999, I don't believe. If at it all. It probably sounds silly to you. A ridiculous story made up by a mad old but hey, it's your belief, right? As long as you're not hurting anybody, go for it. But I feel like you're hurting people here, you know? But look at what's happened to people you. People have died because of your AP project. You've seen many different worlds and timelines, haven't you, Sigma? I sure have. Quite a lot. And what about you, Vi? I know you have, too. Some would say too many. Am I wrong? So how come I can control it better than Phi can? Obviously, it's because I can just go to the flow, like, whenever I want. Hmm. Ten Miyoji should know what I'm talking about as well. I believe you experienced something very similar nearly half a century ago. Half a century ago? So 50 years then. Confirmed. You sent your consciousness to the past to help save a little girl. I knew life. it. I thought so. I thought so. It was a long time ago. But I thought he would be Santa. I, I guess it never crossed my mind that it was Junpei. But perhaps you still remember. It does make sense, and how he. But then, shouldn't he have known that Alice wasn't the Alice when he confronted her in the the treatment center? Right. He said that Clover told him that Alice was the All Ice Alice, but. He should have known that then. Hmm. Yeah, of course I do. 
How could I forget? <laughs> it sounds like his voice is different now and everything. That little girl was you, Akane. Man. And that's why Clover could trust him. Well, that's why he wanted to convince Clover to trust him. Huh. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Suddenly it felt like Fi and I were outsiders. Trespassing on something we had no right to see. He was obsessed with Akane. The picture was her as a child. Of course he would have that because that was his childhood friend back at the time. Tenmuji's face was taunt. I thought it was taut. Taut with emotion as he looked into Akane's eyes. It seemed almost like she was looking back at him. Now, unfortunately, my time is up. Hmm. The final stage of the project will begin very soon. I need to go prepare. I was about to say the final stage, but the, uh, this is a pre-recording, so this is probably her getting ready for the actual AB game. So then who was in the cold sleep storage then? Because you're quite right, there's three pods. I've got... Clover definitely has to be in one of them, unless she's a clone as well somehow. Uh, but Clover's definitely got to be in one. Maybe that means Fi and I are there? And then Alice is actually all ice after all? And she just needed to be in room temperature? Maybe? Ugh, I don't know. Because Tenmuji did say, like, she doesn't need to go into one of the treatment pods to go into cold sleep. She just needs to be kept at room temperature or above. Or below, sorry. So I wonder. The next time we meet, I can tell you the rest of the story. The next time we meet? So come and find me. Right, because we haven't seen you dead yet in this flow, haven't we? I'll be waiting. But what do you mean, waiting? <laughs> like, your dead body? Or something else? Did you somehow survive this flow? Surely not, because... Dio was always meant to come here. He was always meant to infiltrate. He's got his own bracelet. One last thing. The cat in the box. Schrodinger's cat? Is it alive? Or is it dead? It's both until we open the box. Sigma. Fi. You will decide its fate. What's that supposed to mean? Goodbye. Wait. Akane, wait! Oh. <laughs> That was a bit evil. Oh, ten Miyoji. <laughs> it's like she knew. She's a pre-recording. I can almost see you. I mean, I'm sure you can see him, because you kidnapped him. You don't need to worry. Everything is going to be okay. I will see you again one day. I promise. What does that mean? So you're alive? Or are we going to save you? But I'm going to have to ask you. Wait. Akane! Tenmuji! She blue-balled you for half a century, okay? And then she was gone. Well, I feel bad for Tenmuji. Or Junpei. Why is his name Tenmuji? Is that his surname, I suppose? Tenmuji collapsed to his knees, his back hunched and shaking. I saw tears land on the white-knuckled fists he pressed against his thighs. Fifty years he was looking for Akane, and she was just waiting for this moment to use him again for another AB game. Jeez. I mean, like, maybe that's not true, but the optics of the situation, you know. Oh, I kept quiet. What was there to say? Fi and I looked at one another and nodded silently. With a shaking hand, Tenmyuji pulled a photograph out of his pocket. It was a picture of a girl. After all that we'd been through, her smile was enough to break your heart. It is quite a pure little picture, isn't it? <sighs> Alright. Tenmuji, come on, let's go get some answers. Does this mean that Zero Senior is Santa, then? Could be. We made our way to the warehouse on floor A and met up with the others. It took only a few minutes to decide to head to the infirmary. We've got the, uh, Accelivir. As soon as we arrived, we began to treat Alice and Quark for Radical Six. I gave Luna the Excelivir that I'd found in the Q room. She quickly prepared it and... Hmm. I'm trying to wonder, like, how people solved the Q room. Because I feel like... In another flow, someone's gone to the Q room, right? 
Or maybe just no one ever went there. Hmm. Injected Allison Quark. Thank Sorry, goodness. I was just thinking. I, I can see that, yeah, maybe someone didn't go to the cure room, but I've been wrong before, right? Remember when I said that didn't no one opened the AV room and uh, uh, when we were looking for the Excalibur, I think it was? But Dio had... But the game thought that Dio had and assumed that he did. That was pretty terrible on the continuity part of things. It will take some time for them to recover completely, but they should be fine. Looks like everyone's alive in this one. Good. Indeed. Thank you, Luna. And thanks for finding the medicine, you guys. No worries. But what are we going to do about Dio? Thank you so much. Don't sweat it. Was he just unconscious during the whole time you guys were solving the room? Like, how did you guys solve the director's office? If you would need Akane's eyes to open that uh, retinal scanner. No need to thank us. Hmm. Maybe I'm missing something. Tamuji said nothing. Just walked over to Quark's unconscious body. He took the small boy's hand in his own and held it tight. I could see tears at the corners of his eyes as he turned away from us. Now what? Play the AB game? Suddenly, I remembered. Dio, where had he gone? It didn't take me long to find him. <laughs> he was sprawled, unconscious on the floor beneath the sink. Handcuffs? Oh, we found those in the crew quarters. Before you returned, we went to check on the bomb in room two, and we found them there. Right. Of course, the bomb was indeed turned off. Thank you again for dealing with them. You're welcome. You are, quite literally, lifesavers. You didn't have to say quite literally, you could have just said you guys are lifesavers. <laughs> you have my eternal gratitude. I coughed awkwardly and looked pointedly around the room. Yeah, come on man, you're me, okay? <laughs> I still don't know what that's all about. I glanced over at Fi to see she was doing the same thing. Hmm. Alright, now what? After that, we headed back to the Floor A warehouse to play the A-B game. Specifically, me, Fi, Kay, and Luna. Clover and Tenmuji decided to remain in the infirmary, just in case something happened with Alice, Quark, or Dio. Luna would represent Clover's team. With Quark and Dio sleeping, Kay would represent their team by default. Which left me, Fi, and Tenmuji. <laughs> betray. You should vote. No, I'll let you handle it. I chose Betray in the last round. Right. Even though we kept swapping on those flows. Because you... Oh, that's right. Of course, you jumped as well, didn't you? You probably don't trust me right now. What? That doesn't matter now. I've lived like 20 lifetimes with you in this game. Excuse me. I apologize for interrupting, but I think you should be the one to vote in the next round fight. Wow, just takes away my voting rights. Why? You already have 9 BP. There's no reason for you to choose Betray now. That's true. Good point. You see? Hey, you're acting like I might actually try and betray her? Not necessarily. Um, what does it matter what he's suggesting? We're almost there. We just have to play the A-B game three more times. Then we can all get nine points. Hmm. But that means each representative has to choose ally all three times. And no one has to open the door. Wow, so this is the current standings. Fi's the only one with nine. K with eight. Eight over there with Clover. Three with Luna. Three with... This is all just... Third round. Fourth round. Fifth round. But are we taking Dio with us? That's the question, right? Okay. I'll vote. You sure you're alright with this, Sigma? Yeah. I trust you. I handed her the star key. Shall we open the doors? Go for it. Just the three of them. An Ambidex gate has been opened. Jeez, this is gonna take two hours and twenty-five minutes to play over and over again. Forty-five minutes Jeez. remain until Ambidex game polling closes. Oh, right. We have to wait for the deadline. Oh. Oh, so what do we do now? Well, we could vote earlier. 
they were stuck in the room. But then each photo would be stuck inside the AB room for 45 minutes. Yeah, come on. Let's, like, I don't know. Have a game of handball, maybe? Hmm. Okay. Let's go back to the infirmary, then. I agree. Please, lead the way. Alright, let's just chill in the infirmary. That's cool, too. And we got some playing cards. Luna and Kay set off toward the yellow door. I was about to follow when... Hold on. What's up? I just remembered something. Really? What? The AB room on the left. There was no body. In one of the other histories, she... Uh oh. Oh, yeah. You're right. Akane's body was in there. What does this mean? Why didn't we find her body this time? Maybe because she wasn't murdered. Hmm. No. But uh, how? When did history change? Do you remember what Akane said? The cat in the box. Is it alive? <laughs> or is it dead? Are you the cat, Akane? Sigma? Fine. You will decide its fate. The Schrodinger's cat thing. Exactly. I wonder what she meant about us deciding its fate. Perhaps she was saying her own fate wasn't decided yet. Huh. And she, so she is counting on us to go back and save her life or something. The history huh? where she's alive and the history where she's murdered are both real right now. What? No, that's impossible. We've already opened the box. We opened the door to this AB room and there was no body. No, we haven't opened the box. We haven't found a body, but we haven't found her alive yet either. In other words, we haven't actually observed her. And how do we just make her poof into reality then? The hologram was a recording from before this game started. The next time we meet, I can tell you the rest of the story. She is expecting us to meet. It could be another hologram, but the way she says it, right? So come and find me. I'll be waiting. <sighs> Where was Akane now? Where was she waiting for us? The director's office? No. Or... What if she wasn't anywhere now? And we have to go transport our consciousness back to before this game started. What if she was waiting for us in another timeline? Or what if she was waiting for us in the past? Was that even possible? If she was... What would that mean? We'd have to create a time paradox, and Colonel would be very upset with us. Oh my... <sighs> How? How is it to be continued still? How? A new destination's been added? Oh my gosh. Before the game even began. Let's jump right now. Ugh. <laughs> Damn it. Feels like my head's gonna explode. Wait. It's up to us to escape this room and potentially get killed by Dio? Is that it? Was Dio like the control of this experiment? Where the hell am I? Oh my. It's been so long. It looks like an elevator. But... No. This is one of the AB rooms. Girl. Yeah. Uh, who the hell are you? And what the hell's an AB room? <sighs> Damn. Yeah, sorry, I don't remember. I guess you did lose your memory after all. Memory? Memory? Everything. Jeez, even show the one where everyone died. I remember! You're Fi! She grinned. <laughs> when is this? Check your bracelet. It's a red pair. BP is three. Mine's the same. Does this mean... This is the beginning of the game? We've gone back to when we first woke up in the AB room? 
No, not quite. Even before then? I think we woke up a little earlier this time. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? Push the buttons on the side of your bracelet. Two hours? Fifteen minutes. We didn't wake up this long before the primary doors opened last time. No. I think it was at least an hour later. I think we're about an hour early. Yeah. Wait a minute. No, we're not waiting any more minutes or hours. We need to save Akane's life right ha right now. If you're right. Yeah. Akane might still be alive. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. We got I back before Dio killed her. Like, I... I figured that's where they were going with it, in the key room, like, when she was talking about ex experimentation and stuff. Huh. I think... Right. Then. We're here for one reason. To talk to Akane. <laughs> to stop her from getting killed. Exactly. Let's move. We need to get out of here fast. Don't need to tell me twice. Let's go. Oh shit, I still need to collect the gold file from the crew quarters, don't I? Is that gonna affect anything? I don't know. Maybe it will. But for now, let's resolve this damn room. Okay. So we know we need- We don't need to look there! This is our past, remember? That means we're just repeating history. You see what I'm getting at? The password for the safe should be the same one we got earlier. Of course, that's right. Exactly! Now hurry up and open it! Ugh. You need to remember the password for the safe. We figured it out last time. Okay. Okay. It's fine. I've got it all nicely tucked in my memory. Okay. Should we get the gold file first, just in case? Okay. Oh, okay, I opened it. No! That's the wrong password. We need the other one to get the key. Okay. My bad. <laughs> Let's open it. Again. Uh, star Star. Got it. Key. There, it's open. Good work. Hurry up and grab the cracker. Cracker? I was about to say the cracker? Ah, uh, damn, I meant key. How the hell? Just shut up and do it. Gosh, you were blushing a second ago. Oh, we're like an old married couple. I swear. Okay. Let's pop this open. Alright, let's just put this key in here. For God's sake, just do it already! No need to yell. <laughs> Alright. Good. Looks like that worked. Boop. Ready, Fi? What do you think? I know, I know. Just don't get killed as soon as you jump out of here, okay? I don't need to ask every time, right? Then why the hell are you asking? Hurry up and- Right, right! I'm going, I'm going! Ten, nine, eight, one! Done! <laughs> Oof. Hey! I'm expecting Dio's head to just pop down and be like, Hey, what's up? You push the button! Bite me! You were taking too long! We're on a schedule here! Ugh. We've gotta save a life! Come on, Sigma! Jeez! Dawdling. It's like a, taking a casual stroll in the park on a Sunday. Alright, we're out. Fine, I climbed up through the hatch and out onto the top of the AB room. It took us only a moment to spot them. Oh dear. Akane! Behind her was Dio. He was moving quickly and quietly, a knife glinting in his right hand. Shit! See? Lucky you didn't count to ten. There was no time to yell at her. I scrambled down from the top of the AB room. Fi wasn't following me. When I looked back, she was still standing on the roof. Fi! What the hell are you doing? Get down here and... Before I could finish, she moved. Surely Dio heard that. Anyway, Fi's the one who can jump like long distances. There she goes. She ran across the roof, launched herself into the air. Whoa, drop kick! That sounded so comfortable. <laughs> just Like she just like landed on a cushion. <laughs> I was expecting like a... What the? He's fine. I, I don't care if he's fine. Is Akane fine? That's the question. Just unconscious. I bent down and held my fingers in front of his mouth. He was still breathing. I don't think he saw me. No. He probably has no idea what happened to him. 
guy went down like a sack of potatoes. He had it coming. I heard footsteps come to a stop right in front of us. I looked up. That doesn't sound like they came to a stop. It sounds like they're still coming. So you came. Yes, well, you know, you put us here. I've been waiting for you. Jeez. <laughs> it's like oddly arrogant, but like pretty cool. It's just like, oh, I didn't die. Wonderful. It's like a trustful, you know? You're here to hear the rest, right? Yes. Wait. Just, just wait a minute. What the hell is your deal? How can you be so calm? If we hadn't shown up just now, you'd... you'd... Have been stabbed in the heart by this young man and died. Yes. <laughs> Although, that reminds me. I haven't thanked you yet. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> and look at this, like, image here. Dio looks like he's, like, feeling sorry for it. He's like, oh... I very much appreciate you saving me. Some of the expressions of the guys on the characters' faces are just funny. Like Clover's constant smiling. <laughs> th th that what? Hold on. How do you know about being stabbed by Dio? Are you an Esper too? Yes. <laughs> Indeed, I am. I am able to jump through time, just like you. Yeah, so you knew it, it existed, you knew that's how it happens. Why did we need to experiment again? Then what the hell were you thinking? If you knew he was going to stab you, why were you going to let him do it? Because I had to. You what? Think back. Why are you here? If I hadn't been killed by Dio, no one else would have been murdered. Consequently, your own abilities would never have manifested. You put your life on the line just so I could manifest the ability to jump between flows? I did explain, didn't I? The purpose of the AB project was to send the two of you to the past. Or your minds, at least. Is this how you plan on stopping, like, the outbreak of Radical Sex? Sending us to the past to warn us, to warn, like, the world about Radical Sex? In order for that to happen, some death was necessary. Man, she is ice cold. It's it's hard to imagine because like when we met Akane or June in 999, she's just so like nice and charming and you know somewhat kiddish, and now she's just like death was necessary. When a human brain is faced with danger, its processing speed increases. Information is processed more quickly, and time almost seems to slow. A few seconds can feel like an eternity. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, that in itself isn't enough to send oneself through time. The amplitude of the consciousness is simply too small. In order to increase the amplitude, we need to slow down the brain before the increase happens. I see. It's a little like a slingshot. Uh-huh. You pull back on the rubber band, and then let go. The potential energy you stored in the band is released and converted into kinetic energy. That's what fires the bullet out of the slingshot. Uh, I thought it was just a rock, but sure, you could put a 9mm on there, no problem. Now, while a slingshot can only fire in one direction, your mind isn't similarly limited. When the bullet of your consciousness is fired from the slingshot of your brain, it travels past the three-dimensional world and into the four-dimensional one. I mean, I have to say, like, this would be such an exciting ability to have, just to transport your consciousness through time and relive certain moments. It's like a quick save of sorts, you know? Imagine if life just had a quick save ability. I would, like... Hot fair so much better. From that perspective, time is no longer fixed. In other words, you can travel to the future, the past, whenever you like. We can travel to the future? Your consciousness has been released from the three-dimensional cage. I mean, I suppose it can, because we, we can technically move forward in flows, but I always thought that was a bit... You know, odd to transport your mind into the future. It'll be like Click, you know, when uh, you go in the movie Click, when he goes into autopilot, and he just like 
lives through life like robo like a robotic sort of phase. In order for that to happen, I had to infect you with Radical Six. Of course. It slows down like, I mean, everything starts to seem like it's sped up. <laughs> Whoa, what? We're infected with Radical Six? Yes. <laughs> Don't you remember, Sigma? Luna should have told you about it in another timeline. Yes. Are... are you sure? Infecting all of these people was such a horrible disease. But why did you need all of us to be infected? If you were only counting on Fi and I to have the ability to jump between flows, to jump through time. Every single one of you has been infected. Like, why did you bring Quark in? Why did you bring Tenmuji in? Besides, you know, your obvious personal connection with him. Alice, Clover? Well, apart from Luna, of course. Of course. Dio as well, then? Unfortunately, it was necessary. And Kay? We needed to slow your minds in order to store up your potential energy. Then we provided a dire situation that would accelerate your processing speed. The AB game. The result is what you are now experiencing. Your consciousness now occupies four-dimensional space-time. Because we're infected with a disease. Even that, however, wasn't enough. You had the ability to travel, but your memories could easily be lost during the trip. Yes, yeah, so an unfortunate side effect. If the project was to succeed, you had to be able to retain everything you learned in each reality. That was the reason you were forced to jump so many times. So many times. With each jump, your ability to remember improved. Eventually, you would be able to retain everything. <laughs> that is why we made you play the A-B game. Different rooms containing different items. That was why you had to select different chromatic doors. By forcing specific choices, we could cause you to make more jumps. Which would in turn improve my ability to retain my memory. I see. I get it. I think I finally understand. Well, okay, there are a lot of things I don't understand, but all of what you just told me makes sense. You did all of this so that Fi and I could jump through four-dimensional space with our memories intact. Yes. Right? But why did you need us to do that? People have died for this. I mean, let's count how many different ways people died. Hmm. Murder. Antimatter explosion. My favorite one. Suicide. I've died. So has Fi. So have you. Yeah, I'm memento morying. Okay? So why would you do all this? What does it matter that Fi and I jump through time? Is it because I'm a medical student? Is that why? You want me to jump back all the way back to 2028 and you want me to create the cure to Radical Six before it even takes place. That journal, isn't it supposed to take like years or something to make a cure? So you want me to start making a cure early on or something maybe? I don't know. Haven't I told you? Death was unavoidable. You were all destined to die. Sacrifices had to be made for the sake of the project. Jeez, when you say it like that, man. I already know all that! What I'm asking you is why? What is so goddamn important that it's worth all this? Ah. Earth. <laughs> I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually. I feel like I'm on the right track, but I could be way off base. What? I just never have confidence in my ability to guess, like, what happens next in the plot. I'm that guy that doesn't try and guess things, I just like to get taken on a ride, for example. And, you know, like, my, my wife and I, whenever we watch stuff, she's always like, Oh, I bet this is what's going to happen. I'm like, I don't want to know. Just want to watch. <laughs> just when is eventually? In a future not very far from now. What, like, an hour from now? <laughs> Bullshit! That's not good enough! <laughs> Why can't you tell us now? Instead of answering, Akane knelt down next to Dio and picked his knife up off the floor. I'm going to keep this with me. 
Don't change the subject. But it's almost time. What are you talking about? We've got plenty of time. No. In a few moments, you'll return to the original timeline. How does that work? What? This is the way it has to be. Don't fight it. Lagomorph. Yes. What? We're doing magic powers now? Lagomorph? You call him Zero Junior. His official designation is Lagomorph. So you know we call him Zero Junior then. Lagomorph, this is an order. Unlock my bracelet. Compliance. <laughs> Now, everything is in place. Um... I have put the bracelet onto Dio. Well, he'll be happy. All we have to do is place his body in the fifth AB room. The second one from the right. That's the one Quark is in, right? Correct. I will move him. I will also put your bodies back into the third AB room. Excuse me, bodies? Once that's done, I will reset its puzzle to an unsolved state. Why do you need to do all that? To recreate the history that you remember. What? Do we have to play the whole entire game again? Your consciousness is about to leave your body and return to the future. Oh no. Your body will be emptied, and your <laughs> other consciousness will jump back in. Right, the one that happened at the very beginning of the AB game. And maybe that's how Fire retained her memory? And that's how she knew to call me Sigma. If your bodies aren't back in the third AB room by then, it would be... bad. Hmm. It's just like how you had to create the Noonary game nine years later, after your first experience with it, because you needed Junpei to jump back. You needed to keep the time loop stable, right? So you're saying some version of us is going to wake up in that room and repeat the same history again? But which history is it going to recreate? Or rep repeat, sorry. Well... I guess this could actually be our second or third time. You are exactly correct. So we've saved your life before. Lastly, I'm going to leave this with you. She paused and pulled something out of her pocket. It was a small key attached to a string. I'll tie it onto your ankle so that you won't lose it. All right, Sigma. Okay, well, just don't tie it to my arm. Apparently, I have a history of just crushing my arm and losing that. 